Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So I'm here with my 2014 reading wrap up where I'll be talking about the goals that I had set myself for 2014 and if I was able to meet those goals. And then I also picked out my top 10 books that I read in 2014. So I will share those with you as well. So to start off, for 2014 and for the last three years, I've had a goal of reading 50 books in a year. And this is the first year that I've actually met that goal. And I actually made myself another bonus goal to read actually 50, 52 books in the year, which would be like a book a week. So I met that goal as well. This year I managed to read 57 books, which is super exciting that I was finally able to meet my goal. Um, and I also had another goal to go along with it of reading like four books a month. That way I was like consistently reading books throughout the year. Um, and I also met that goal. So I'm super excited that I was able to meet my reading goals for the year. Um, I do have new goals. I've kind of made more formal goals for 2015. I will have a video talking about those goals coming up in a few days. So if you're interested in that sort of video, definitely keep an eye out for that. But yeah, I'm super excited I was able to meet my goals. Um, and then I looked through all the books that I read this year and I picked out my top 10 favorites and I thought that I would share them with you now. So it was kind of hard picking out just 10 books. So I don't have these ranked in any particular order. Um, I have like my top three. I'll tell you what my top three are when I get to the books, but um, otherwise these aren't in any particular order. I just really enjoyed all of these books. So I kind of have my books broken up into different categories. Um, just there's different sort of books that I like. Um, I've mentioned a lot on my channel that I like books about like family dynamics. So that is my first category. And the first book that I'm going to talk about is The Weird Sisters um, by Eleanor Brown. I've talked about this book in my channel before. I had it as um, one of my favorites maybe for the month of, I think... September, I want to say. I think that's when I read this. But this is about three sisters. They're all grown up and they all have to move back home to their parents' house for different reasons. Um, and I just really enjoyed this. I really love books about families. So this was definitely a favorite for the year. And then another book about family dynamics is The Vacationers. This is by Emma Straub. And this is about a family who goes on vacations in Spain and it's just about their vacation and all the kind of stress of their vacation and I really really enjoyed this I think I read this I was at my parents house and I had made a big like Amazon order and I had the books like delivered there and it was like in the summer and I like read it on like one day it was like so like kind of fast-paced and entertaining but I thought that this one was really good as well and then also for family dynamics, I also listened to an audiobook by Leanne Moriarty, um, The Husband's Secret. I also listened to Big Little Lies by her. I had to pick between the two books of which one was my favorite. And I went with um, The Husband's Secret. Um, definitely about family dynamics as well. There's different characters in this book, but their lives all kind of intertwine. And I guess The Husband's Secret is the wife finds like a letter from her husband that says like do not open or only open upon my death or to my wife only open upon my death and she's like um you know really tortured if she should open and figure out what the secret is that he has um so it's a big element of the story but that one was definitely good as well and I definitely really enjoyed audiobooks this year so that was definitely my favorite audiobook and I also discovered Leanne Moriarty as an author that I really, really liked and I got some books from her for Christmas. So definitely, I think in 2015, I will have more favorites by her as well. So that was number three was The Husband's Secret. Um, and then, so those were all for kind of family dynamic sort of books. Um, another favorite is Attachments by Rainbow Real. And this one was just really cute. Um, it's about an IT worker and 
his job is to read emails and like correspondence and um, anything like online activity of employees um, at his job. So he like works nights, so he doesn't really know any of the employees, but he just has to read through all their emails. And he comes across um, it's two coworkers, two female co coworkers who are like writing back and forth, and he really like really starts to fall for one of them. So it's kind of an interesting concept of a book, and it alternates between like the two female their like, their um, email exchanges and then just chapters of this IT guy. Um, but I thought this was a really fun book to read, and I really love this author. So this was my number, I think number four. Um, and then I also had to pick another book by Rainbow Real. Um, these, this is the only author that I like have two books by her. Everyone, uh, for every other author, if I read multiple books by them, I had to like pick my favorite, but I couldn't pick between these two. Um, I love both of them. Um, but this is Fangirl. This is a young adult by her. And the main character is about her freshman year of college, and she writes fanfic. And she's really kind of, I don't know, not super social. She'd rather be in her room writing fanfic. So it's just about her freshman year of college. And I really, really enjoyed this book as well. And this is, um, as I said, like more young adult. So that, and this one I think would be in my top three. I really love this one. Another young adult book, and this is one that I've had as a favorite and talked about on my channel before, but this is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I really, really love this. I also read Lola and the Boy Next Door this year, but if I had to pick between the two, I think I'd pick this one. I think mainly because it is set in Paris, which I thought was more interesting to read about, whereas Lola and the Boy Next Door was set in San Francisco, and I live in like the San Francisco Bay Area, so it was more fun for me to read a book like set in Paris, and this is like the first in the series too, so I really love this, and definitely was a favorite this year. And then another young adult book, and this is one that I just finished in December, but this is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, And this one is just about a road trip. So they start off in California and then they end up in Connecticut. And it's about their like detour and them going from different cities. Um, so I really like that aspect of it. And this just had like, it had like receipts from their trip and like souvenirs and stuff they picked up along the way. Um, Roger would create like playlists when they're driving so it has like listing of songs that were their playlist um, like information about all the states they went to I just thought it was really interesting and I liked reading about the different places that they went I've always liked the idea of like doing a road trip so I thought this was a really fun book and I really enjoyed it so I think what book am I on that's seven, so I have three left. Yes, that's right. So, the next book, and this is definitely in my top three, um, this is Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. And this was really, really good. It was about two main characters. There was an orphan, um, let's see. So, Molly is kind of a foster child in like modern times. She's like 17. And um, then there's Vivian. And she was an orphan um, in like the night, like the Great Depression era. Um, and she kind of like lost her family and she got put on an orphan train and they would put orphans on this train and take them to like the Midwest to have them get adopted. And she kind of went from different families and it was kind of about her experience. And um, now Molly has to do like community service and she's like clean out Vivian's addict and the two kind of connect over their like similar like sort of childhood so this one was really really good I really like books about like historical um, times I think it's really interesting and I just really 
loved this one. So definitely one of my top three books of the year. Um, and then another of my top three books of the year, so Fangirl, Orphan Train, and then I'd also say The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. But this one is set in um, like World War II in Germany, and it's about like the German like children perspective, which was a really interesting perspective for like a World War II novel. Um, but the narrator of this one is Death, so it, it was really interesting, really enjoyable. <laughs> well, very enjoyable to read, but definitely some really heavy and difficult parts of this book, but definitely one of my favorites. And I really like sort of World War II sort of books. So I definitely enjoyed this one. So definitely my top three. And then the final book is the, actually the last book that I finished this year. And this was Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. Really, really love this book. I had this in my December favorites and definitely was one of my top 10 for the year. Um, it's kind of memoir slash like advice book, but I really like her and I thought this was really fun to read. And this was fun. She had some like pictures like throughout the book. So I thought that that was really fun. And yeah, that is my, so those are my top 10 books for this year. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books or what books you've read in 2014 that you really loved, you can let me know in the comments below. So that is everything, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.